Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. This is going to be the continuation of the video where we have been uh, solving this scenario where we are using to remove the unique records into one target table and the duplicate records into another target table. So we did this thing in part 1, now we are going to do the part 2. So this is a uh, uh, you can say a quite a modification where you want to load the unique records into one table but for the duplicate records you want to move at least the first occurrence into the same target table and the next consecutive repeated, uh, repeated uh, values uh, the, that is the repeated uh, rows will be loaded into other target table so at least once the record needs to be loaded into one target table and rest all the future uh, repeated values will be loaded into another target table. So I will just show you what this means is let's open the input file. So if you see we have A which is occurring only once. For C we have two occurrences but now we have removed two C occurrences in the previous lecture. Now we want to take at least one C and if you see B, we want to take at the first B that is the first occurrence and rest, rest of the two B's will be loaded into another target. So there is quite a difference between the part 1 and part 2 and you can be tested to like design both the solutions in the interview because they are quite similar and if you are able to understand and design first one the second one will be easier for you to understand and also there is some additional concept that we will be looking when we are going to design the mapping so let's quickly create a mapping I will name it as part 2. We will use the same source and the same target. It is having only one column. Okay. So, just like the previous lecture, we will be first sorting the input data. We will sort on the same port. Okay. Then we will use an expression. Now, unlike the previous lecture, we are not going to use a dummy port. But we are going to create a count. This count is somewhat similar to the row number row num function in the SQL. So, I will demonstrate how it looks like. Let me first create it in the expression itself. I will rename this as input data. Or rather, current input data. Okay. Now, here I am going to create the count. Or I will call it as occurrences. I will make this integer. I will make a variable and count this. Before that, I will create a previous input data. Okay. This will be a variable also and the value will be the current input data. Now if you see, first we are arranging the data in a sequence and then we will be assigning a row number. Let's write this in an if statement. So if the current input data equals 
the previous input data. That is, if you have arranged them in a sorted manner and you see there are multiple occurrences. So in that case the count will be increased by 1 else there will be one single count of the input data. This is quite easy to understand. So it will be occurrences plus 1 else it will be 1. Now we will take the output over here so if you see how the data will appear now it will be become something like this a b b b c c and d also it will be like a is occurring one time, B, first B, second B, third B, then first C, second C, and first D. Or rather, I will keep this for future. Okay, so now we are done with this and we have the occurrences in front of each of the columns. Now we will use an aggregator and find the total occurrences. So in this case we will take the current input here and on this input data we will do a count. I will call it as final count. It will be also a number. This is going to be a count of this field. Okay. Now we will be using a joiner like we did in part 1. So, what we are going to do, we will be taking our input data with the number of occurrences and also we will be taking the current uh, the data with the total that is the final count ok it's not joining because I have not used this property it is very important to use this sorted input property so we join these over here and join I will give the join condition here and it will be on the basis of the input data ok so how the data will now look like we have this thing we have joined on this input column and now we have the final count that is A is already 1 B is 3 so it will be like 3 C is 2 so it will be like 2 and D is also 1 so if you closely observe we want all the records where the values of the occurrences and the final counts are same you see can you visualize this thing that in this manner we will be able to take at least one that is at least one times the data will be taken and all the uh, subsequent uh, repetitive values will be moved to other target so you in this manner you are actually going to discard the consecutive uh, uh, the re repeated values let's cancel this and go here Okay, so we will use a router. We will take the input data, the final occurrences, and the final count. 
we'll make a group here and say unique and unique will be when this value final occurrence is equal to the final count we need two targets so all the one time occurrences will be moved to this data and all the subsequent values will be moved to this let's save this and we will create a workflow here okay we will disconnect this so that the workflow appears okay so we got the part 2 now we will quickly define the session properties we have a source data now I'm going to remove these values because these were only for the demonstration purpose so that you guys can understand I will name this as so this was having the unique records dummy one Let's save this and quickly run this. It's running now. And it succeeded. Now let's check the output. Let me also open the input first. Okay. So here you can see we have the input data. So we have A, B, and C, and D that is only one time in the unique records. And rest of the subsequent values are now moved into the duplicate records. So in this manner, you can extract at least one value from the bunch of repetitive values and store them in one target file and rest of all the redundant data will now be moved to another target file so this is quite a you can say a manipulation in the previous scenario of the part one and in this part two you learn how to create a sort of you can say a row number in the input data by using an expression if you still have any doubt please do comment and let me know and this scenario part 1 and part 2 are very important and you should be familiar and try to demonstrate this in your own personal sandbox before you go to the interview till then happy learning goodbye